Hey y'all, it's Freeze Cracked again. Hey, uh, I thought I'd just, today, I got this rock, I just grabbed it, and it looks a little bit layered, like it might be several different layers, but it's big and it's got huge square ends and everything, and it's raw, and I thought I'd just beat on a little bit and show you a little more of the way that, you know, you can kind of attempt to solve percussion puzzles, and then I also thought, if I get it down a little bit, I can't do it with this, that I try and do a little indirect heavy percussion on it too. Um, so anyway, this thing is, it doesn't really have good places to get into it. And as always, I'm looking at, well, do I want to lose? What do I want to lose? But everything is squared off. So I could get into it right in the middle here. And it looks like there's a freeze crack right there. So I don't know what to do. You gotta do something. I think I'll hit it here and see if I can even initiate a crack. Nope. Nope. See, I'm on two square and edge. It really doesn't work, which I knew. I do have solid copper too. So I tilted it downward and was able to blast off a, a thing. Well, this is really layered. This is really stratified kind of stuff. So now I should be able to take a little flake here. And this is so typical of the Texas stuff. This rock is absolutely gorgeous right here under the cortex. And I can see all different kinds of layering in there and I can't see how bad it gets in the middle. And I also can't tell there's two layers that look like they may be less um, healed than some of the others. So it's hard to know what I'm going to be able to get away with. Little cracks. I tell you, sometimes I kind of think maybe I should have a saw. Because some of this stuff is so pretty. Wow. Either that or I should be good at uh, spalling. I'm not really getting good angles on this either. Well, there's probably an arrowhead in that. Okay, I really need to figure out. Where's Marty when you need him? Marty, need a spoiler. Spoiler on aisle 12. Dang. You know, I'm just uh, pointing that down, trying to get that, pointing it down and, and hitting it, trying to get me a, an angle. But I'm not that good at it. I got too steep an angle. So this angle is great for driving on the edge to try and, uh, you know, reduce to work a point, but it's too. Okay. It was too uh, angled to try and drive in above the edge and do anything good. Okay. Hope for the best. That ain't the best. That ain't the best either. Beating it to death. What's that old saying? Use enough gun? I mean, I think that's my saying too. It's really weird how uh, this rock can look that good and need that much hit. I mean, it looks kind of waxy, but it's just requiring major hits. All right, well, <clears throat> we're going to go with 
this thing, I can hear it now, you know. Use a hammer stone. Gotta be using a hammer stone. Well, I might have a hammer stone big enough, but I can't wield it big. Definitely a little slower, a little slower force with a bigger mass would be the way to go here. Huge square edge. Well, <clears throat> This is kind of broken looking right here. Let's see what happens. Cool looking rock. I shouldn't have used it as a video rock, but oh well. Alright, so we got a turtley looking thing here, and of course one good hit there can do some good here, so let's see. Maybe two good hits. Well. See it getting a little drier, you know, you get into the middle and it starts getting drier, doggone it. Might ought to try and oops, try to move you. Wonder if I was moving you all along. Hope not. That was a little English on that shot. Tim all my usual stuff. I don't know how many times to repeat to y'all all my usual stuff because I don't want to I don't want to drive you crazy with it. Talking about support all over the place and things of that nature. Of course the other problem is I guess I don't know which videos people watch first. I may be thinking, oh, well, gee, I've said all that before, and this is the first one you're watching. Cool. So we got a big turtle. This is probably a good, a good one to talk about. How many minutes have I spent? Oh, great! I can't even see. Not a lot. This is a good turtle, really, to talk about. Oh, what a pretty rock. I just want to keep this rock as a souvenir. Alright, so I got still a bunch of squareness. This is a better looking side. It's got a flaw in there, so I might as well attempt to keep doing what I'm doing. Tilting up a little bit, supporting on that, because I, I just want to try and get the little hump addressed. And I'm kind of going at a side angle to catch it with the edge. Or not. See, the, the, the support does weird things, because that was a big hump. Wherever it went. Big hump. But the support on the hump made it, you know, undercut it and just kind of flatten that like the hump wasn't even there. 
And the only way you'll really get to understand how that stuff works is just to do it a lot and observe the phenomena. Okay, so I was wanting to come down. What I'm trying to do is just kind of clean this a little bit. I was not really trying to clean that. I'm trying to get up here to work on this side some. Okay, so what do we got? That's looking kind of good. Okay, so basically got a got a very turtly area here. Can you see it? Turtly area. Big ridge there. Well, I'm not perfectly lined up with the ridge, but I've made a platform here that's stout, and it's about the right location. So I'm gonna go back to my lead filled bopper and try and hold the back edge really good and sort of support this ridge over here. I'm not really putting it flat. I'm kind of holding it up. See what happens. Came down there. Little spots of concrete starting to show up. Don't really want to hit into that concavity. Too high right there. Let's come on down a little. There's a tiny bit of ling. This isn't flat either, so it's not like I can use that whole side by saving it. And the reason I said that is because I got a platform right here that's toward that side, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. Flattening out. I got another ridge and another platform right there. Sporting it back edge. Didn't catch it well and should have ground it more, so blew that one completely. Up here, kind of a ridge, kind of a platform. It needs to be ground, ground, ground. That one was supported well. This one's on Cortex. So I'm abrading the crap out of it. And I try to just tilt it down a little and wrap it because I didn't know what it was going to do. Try to catch the edge on that one a little. But that stuff still at the center line, still got a square edge. see it
know what I've said before is you'd like to try and be conservative with your flattening now there's no real reason for me to have all of this still you know you're like well what are you doing I'm doing like I always do just purposelessly flattening both sides and trying to get it thin without really paying attention to where am I going with it why does that matter well it's like I've said before if I'm attacking issues from way across the room when I could be attacking from close up because I don't need that width in the first place then I'm not being as effective as I'd like in attacking the issues plus it's just unnecessary and more likely to have a problem more likely to uh, hinge stuff not that that matters at this stage of the game As I've said before, you know, if you're if you're relatively new to napping, go ahead and hinge the crap out of everything, and maybe you'll learn how to get out of the trouble. But um, as I've said before, there's only a couple of reasons that hinges occur, and um, at first they're a problem because of not reading the rock carefully. Or correctly not understanding not the hidden concavities and stuff but there's also quite a few of them that are the result of not hitting hard enough because basically if your flake would have gone through and not hinged out if you had supported your work better or if you had hit harder or both then uh, you can spend a lot of time trying to read the rock and figure out why that hinge occurred when in fact it didn't have as much to do with the rock as it did with how hard you hit what a nice flattening flake Angles are really critical. Now, I don't know if you ever played tennis. It's kind of like when you play tennis, you have to you have to really see the ball as it's coming to you, and you've got to really hit hit right with the racket. And you've got to control the racket really, really well. On the off chance that you're a little bit off where the ball hits the face of the racket, and the racket tries to like torque in your hand and stuff like that. Well, this this game is kind of similar in a way because you want to lock everything down pretty good when you get ready to hit, so that. Your rock doesn't move in an unexpected way when you hit it. Because if it does, you may not even notice it if you haven't done a lot and aren't thinking about it. But if I go to hit this right here, and I don't hold the rock tight, and I let that push the rock down instead of taking the flake, well, it's gonna be a short flake. Why? Because I let it change the angle. So when in doubt, hold your rock tighter. I'm holding it really tight on the back edge. I got it jammed into my hand. I'm pulling it really tight. I'm holding it perfectly straight up, almost facing me. See, I try and swing all the same way as much as possible. I do do side shots and crap like that, but I swing the same way, and then I just change the rock as to how I want to hit. There's a flat spot there. There's an area that could be feathered right here. So I'm just gonna feather it right into here. And uh, there's a little layer separation thing, and it kind of dug there, but it feathered back over here. All right, so we're going to hit up here and see if we can get rid of that. And it's gone. 
And I still got one knot on this thing and the rest of the edge, well, there's kind of a thing too. And I really, <clears throat> again, if my point is here, then these two things do not matter at all and I can just bevel them down and knock them off. Instead of finessing it and sitting here and microscopically analyzing it and everything, just go down, go down, holding underneath trying to make them feather a little and so you see that and you go well gee didn't you just lose some width and create a, a steep area yeah well, I didn't create a steep area I made it it's it's more steep than would have been optimal if I needed the width but I'm not trying to make you know a cylindrical disc shaped point here so um, so then this one Turn it down. All righty. So I guess it's probably been long enough where I can turn this off and come back try and use my big punch that I haven't practiced with. It would be good if I had gone ahead and gotten another big abrader out of the room. Once again, I'm procrastinating. Oh well, doesn't matter. Be right back with a punch.